Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Andrew McCart, IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Mark Chamberlain with a shiny new belt. My camera can't... Well, you know what? I'll pan down. Let's have a look at it. Shall I give you a 12? I'll give you a 12. There you go. <laughs> a fighter and a model. There we go. Um, yeah, talk to me about the fight. Gavin Gwynn on paper, probably your toughest test to date. But you know what I mean? Did you expect it to go that soon? Yeah, I mean, we had a chat the other day, didn't we? Just before the weigh-in. Yeah. Um, going back off of what I said, I think uh, it was something along the lines of I knew it was a tough fight, 50-50 fight, but this is a fight I need to push on with my career. I take my hat off to Gavin Gwynn, he's a tough, tough man. Don't have nothing bad to say about him, do you know what I mean? He's a true champion, British Commonwealth, European champion. Yeah, I mean, he's a tough man, but I, I was the better man on the night. Talk to me about the stoppage. Obviously, that eye looked very, very bad from the second round. Obviously, obviously you were using your backhand coming from that stance of yours. And that was you, you, were you targeting the eye after the, the second round? The, the doctor had to look at it for the first time? No. Do you know what? I, I knew, obviously, I hurt his eye because it, it flared up within seconds, literally 10 seconds and then another 10 seconds. It was massive. Um, and then I think when we got up off the stalls and they went into the second or the third round, I see the doctor say one more round and he was told to go for it and then it's just like a killer instinct I guess we both just went for gold because if they went to the scorecards it, it was probably literally could have gone either way do you know what I mean so yeah I mean I think he knew he panicked a little bit kept getting caught I hurt him a couple of times to the body I felt like I was just getting to get going if you know what I mean like second gear um, but I was, I was happy really I mean I, I won't ever shy away from an early night but I'd like to have shown a bit more but it's what it is made a statement and that's all that matters what's going through your mind when the doctor jumps on the ring looks at the eye and uh, the doctor says one more round you know that Gavin or any opponent is going to be like right I've got one more round I need to actually put on the gas what does that do in your mind it's a big worry because I had it in my last fight I had a nasty cut in the 7.48th and it, it was pouring like literally every time I got off the stall and the doctor went look we'll have one more round and we'll go to the scorecards but don't worry and I just thought well I don't want that do you know what I mean I don't want to go eight rounds and have two rounds left and it be st stopped on a cut you want to either get the knockout or get the get the points win not stop on a cut mm. so yeah I was very lucky you can still see the scar in the yeah scar. it's pretty fresh um, but it is what it is I mean no doubt he's going to have a sore eye, but it's part of the game, isn't it? Mm. We'll go back to the hotel, I'll check he's all right. I won't say we, we can't have a drink out here together, but we'll have something to eat together, that's for sure. Talk to me about this, uh, His Excellency, Turkey Ella Sheikh. I mean, he seems to be a, a big fan of yours, and I heard a little bit what you said to Ali Drew there about how that came about and well, how this fight came about. I just want to, if you can elaborate again and tell that story again, how this fight came about. Definitely. Um, so it started back in December. With the lads I used to work with, um, they invited me out for a curry with them. Went out for a curry, was on the way home about 9.30 p.m. Uh, Frank was out here in the other event that was on in December. Yeah, in December and uh, he rung me up, 9.30, they're like three hours ahead out here. So I thought, oh, what's he on this time of night? Like, must be talking about me. And uh, I answered the phone, asked how each other was. And he said, Mark, I've got an opportunity here. I'll let His Excellency tell you. He passed me on the phone, I couldn't believe it. Like, he just said, Mark... Um, I've got an opportunity on the 8th of March for you if you want it. Do you want to fight out in Riyadh? I said, yeah, 100%. Sign me up. I'll be there. Before you even knew an opponent? Yeah, too right. Um, I'm, I'll fight whoever they put in front of me. Um, and here we are tonight with a new belt. Good stuff. Um, does that add pressure when you know like, somebody as influential as His Excellency Turkey El Sheikh is a fan of yours? He wants you over here. Do you feel like you the, the pressure to perform and get that knockout with the, the whole show being <laughs> knockout chaos and whatnot? Definitely, it's a, it's a bit of added pressure, not only because I'm away from home, but I'm, I'm around the world, you know what I mean? I've never boxed internationally as a professional, but I'm hoping I've made everyone happy and put my name out there and made a statement now. Social media has been booming over the last few days with all the other platforms, so I think I've deserved my spot now. I've been boxing since I was six, I'm 25 now. I put the time in in the gym day in, almost day out. To, almost time to retire. Yeah, well, I'm just getting started, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll fight whoever they want in front of me. Um, hopefully I've made His Excellency happy and I want to be back out here because Riyadh, like I was just saying, is, is unbelievable. Like to a boxing fan in England, to everyone who travels around England to all the shows, if you can do it financially, please just buy a ticket 
get yourself to Riyadh because it's, it's, it's second to none the way that they run everything they treat you honestly I, I just can't explain how unreal this this feels Mark one final one before with me before I let you crack on there's still more media to do and you, I'm, I'm sure you want to get back and chill um, Sam Knox is always going to be labelled with you Mark Chamberlain and Sam Knox because we do have very we've got two very talented lightweights out in the UK and we all love a, uh, a British dust up all British dust up as you can tell with the just look at the Jack Taylor and uh, J- Josh Taylor and Jack Carroll fight how that's blown up because we've got two British rivals is that a fight that interests you? I mean it it is, but I'm getting sick of it now because the fight could have happened. Like, I, I just had my one in November. We were meant to fight. They offered me it on the 10th of February, but I still had stitches in my head. Like, be real about it. So I said, look, I'll be ready in March. Here we are in March in Riyadh. He could have held on a couple of weeks and we could have got it on in Riyadh, but he chose to fight for the British. So he's on his path. I'm on mine. He's got his belts and I've now got my belt and high ranking so whatever innit if, if, if our paths cross they cross if not I mean I'm, I really don't care to be honest Mark like I said go and enjoy the rest of your night after you've done this media and uh, thank you. Oh, good, well done again tonight thank you very much mate thank you thank you Wall Street memes casino I'm fine and sportsbook